Order 602. Is there anything on the agenda that needs to be amended or changed? There's no point to say. Um, and then I just, just to clarify, so when we go to the executive session tonight, that'll just be with board members only to go through Teresa's evaluation. And then next uh, meeting, we'll, we'll have a formal one with Teresa. Okay, you saw that. And did everybody get the attachments I sent out today? I apologize that they were sent out today, but I was, I sent them to five. I was hoping to get all five. I got four. Um, okay. I'll move to approve the agenda as written. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we do not have any appointments this evening. And so I guess it's. Walking in. So we'll just leave it up to public comment. Um, I noticed in the paper that we were putting things out to bid. Yes. So we're putting out for ditching yep. and culverts. Mm -hmm. Which roads are we going to be putting the culverts on? We're going to be putting the same roads we're ditching, uh, Gilead and East Bethel. Because I got a paving grant for East Bethel, so I have some culvert replacement, so it's going to be on Factory Hill and uh, Randolph Center Road. And so a couple of them are on that road, or in the paving project, so I want to get them done for the paving, for obviously we're going to replace oh, okay, the no, paving. Okay. And then Gilead okay. is also getting a couple culvert replacements along with ditching. The foot on, where, where am I ditching on Gilead, on? Road to South? I'm ditching right from the minute you hit it. To just before Gary Slacks. Yeah, I can understand the ditching, but um, oh, I'm, I'm just kind of confused. Well, the ditching when you use the if you use the back, it, it takes forever. Uh huh. And I can I can understand that. Yeah. But I was just kind of curious about if you putting the culverts across the hard top. Uh -huh. I can understand that too now. Yeah. I, before I thought you just going to be doing that on some of the dirt roads. Yeah. Just kind of curious about that when we doing the dirt. Roads. Yeah. Not right now. If those are those are the projects that will spend all the money that we've set aside for ditching is going to be on those two roads. It's going to okay. be because it's. But I think Gilead needs it in East Bethel, but that's why they're going to be. Um, and we're going to patch. We're only going to patch where we're um, cutting on Gilead because it's paved. But I'm not repaving Gilead, <clears throat> so they're going to have to do a patch over yeah. the culvert. Right. But right. Gilead, uh, but East Bethel is getting repaved because we got a paving grant. Right. I know yeah. it's. I know it's going to be cleaned up, so it'll be ditched, culvert placement paved. We did the bridge last year, so East Bethel will be. So are all for a couple is, days. Is all the culvert work happening inside the paved areas? Yes. Okay. And I yep. think that was kind of what you're getting at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think what you're getting at is if there was culverts in the dirt areas, why aren't we doing that? Right. Yeah. yeah. No. No. All so, within the paved areas. Okay. So, okay. Right. so is there any? Plus, do I have a machine there? So it's going to be faster. East Bethel. Is that just goes up to Lincoln Farm, right? Yep, we're not going that not far. Even, it goes uh, to the bridge? No, no. Uh, Factory Hill comes in, Factory then Hill it goes comes. over the bridge, and then the that bridge. goes to Oxbow. But if you come around the corner of Factory Hill, if you take that right, that goes towards Lincoln Farm. Right. And right. eventually, but I'm more only paving to the bridge. I'm yeah. only paving to the bridge. Yep. So we're not, not going, going all the way to the Lincoln back. Farms, part of that no, eventually no, no. is Randolph. So the others going left. Going yes, to Brick Grange. I'm not, we're not paving in front of the Grange because it's not class two highway. So you can't, we can only get a paving grant for class two and we don't have the money and okay. so. They don't go up to the Lincoln Farm? Not, I mean class two, no, not all it the way. It does, the issue we have right now is the pavement from the bridge up to Lincoln yeah. is in such dire shape that if we just put a, uh, an overlay on it, it's just all gonna break yeah, down. Yeah, right. So we're thinking that, well, one of two things, either maybe just take the bridge from the bridge to Lincoln Farm, just down the pavement. Down the dirt. Add, yeah, okay. down, down the dirt, add gravel and leave it dirt up through there. Or we'll have to redo that road. Because if you've been up through there, that pavement, so, yeah. uh, you know, the wheel ruts have gotta be like yeah. a foot deep. Because especially uh, past, yeah. Towards the flat, they come off that first house, and then when you go yeah. towards clouds, it's yeah. pretty bad. So we're not 
or does it, I mean, we're going to ditch, yeah. you know, up toward the bridge and get it all cleaned up. So that way the water, you know, it's like anything, right? Save yeah, we're food. coming from 14 down into the Y. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, and it's funny right too, is that, and it's weird that that's class two. Yeah. Because I was planning for a paving sense. grant, yeah. I'm like, these Bethel, that piece of these Bethel's class yeah, two highway, so other than that, you can't get a paving grant on, on our class three roads. We have to pay for that. So that was kind of the weird thing. Well, I've been over it enough times to know that it's not Then it was. That's where my daughter lives. Oh, there you go. Which, all over the bridge? In front of the grange? She lives just beyond our place. Oh, okay, yeah. We did, well, we fixed the bridge, so you noticed that. But, um, yeah, that piece there isn't. Because that's the only paved road that we have in this belt, right? Yeah. Like over that yeah, way. eventually, mm -hmm. once you go over the bridge, there's a little bit of pavement in front of the grange, and then it goes back to her. Wait, because they're in on from the bridge on up to Lena Farm, just turn it into a dirt road? Maybe. That? I would, I, you, I would say do it because. <laughs> I'm right all now. these roads <laughs> that they do it. Work when you plow it, you're not taking that north road with the center. Mm -hmm. There's nothing coming out off the wheel tracks at all. Yeah. And like I said, you see, just put a coat on, you're really not doing anything. Well, at we, all. we have a plan maybe next year. To do the reclaiming pieces, maybe. So I mean, we, the thoughts have been right now is we have the we have the piece on Gilead Road, that one mile section of pavement on Gilead yeah. that is just falling apart. Right. That uh, apparently the town paved many many years ago because there was some free money in the state and they paved it. Um, but it's in such dire shape if we, unless we took it back down to dirt to repave it, it's not going to last long. Um, so we've been talking about potentially maybe taking that section back to dirt. Yeah, which has been met with no good, nothing. Nobody's happy about that thought. So that's why we're ditching into a culvert replacement right now. I said, well, we're at least getting the water off the road, and we'll make do with what we have for a while. And there's a couple other areas that just don't make sense, like the piece from the bridge up to the farm, just because of the condition that the road's in. To redo that whole section will, will cost a lot of money. Yeah, well, that's why I think it's if you just a temporarily, you yeah. know, just take it down to dirt and then as the funds come, yeah. right. then you could do it. And by that time, maybe the road will pound itself back in the, in the harness where when you do pay it, it'll last and it'll right. hold up a little while. Well, I think Gilead and then there's the burn us at the stake before that's going to happen. People do not want that pavement to come up. Yeah, so that's kind of the yeah. compromise is, well, then we're coming to ditch and we're going to do some culvert replacement and basically we're going to deal with it until this is just all we can do right now is to get the water off the road right now and then we'll deal with it later. There was a small section we talked about paving, but frankly, it's, we don't have the money. So it's really... And it's past pothole patch and it's just the whole road's falling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, I think we can quote it as like, Twenty some odd thousand dollars is to take it back to dirt, yeah. and it's like twenty, no, and then it's like quarter million dollars to yeah. rebuild it. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty big. And big the next, project. yeah, because our next big project that we get a paving grant for will, well, it's going to be toss up. It's going to be well, no paving grants. Either going to be Christian Hill or Camp Brook. It'll be a toss up as to what at the time what it is. Usually it's three years in between a paving grant. We just got this one, so. Um, Sand Hill will get repaid during the 1.7 million, the next piece of the water project. So the next phase of the water project will be unless we get our money from Bernie, then, <laughs> then no, it'll be happening sooner. So um So yeah, ditching I, yeah, ditching and culverts are out and there's a paving bit that's out, right? Ditching culverts, paving bin, yep, I need to put out um, structures because we got I I wrote a grant for the bridge. Uh, what is that? Watershed? Camp Brook and Watershed right there. The road and structures grant to reinforce that bridge right there to do some riprap and guardrail. And I have that money. I have that grant. So that will go out and that will go out as well as Christian Hill. We got better roads money. So um, Sanders will be done starting in a couple of weeks. And we also got another one for Christian Hill. So which I don't have to spend for a couple of that years. But I, yep. Yep. Exactly. But I would. It's, I don't have to get it out this year, but I'm gonna try just to might as well get everything out that I can. So okay. just let us know when you get some free time, Doug, and yeah. we'll put well, you to work. Nine one one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Next time I'll call, I'll say Doug there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 
Any other public comment or inquiry? So Christy Fry is here from the Equity and Inclusion Committee. So Christy was saying they divvied them up. So Christy is going to do some, and other members are going to come at different times. So. Yeah. Good evening. Well, big turnout tonight. I'm glad you got here early. <laughs> I was here really early. <laughs> I showed up at 5.30. <laughs> I was so eager. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, not hearing any more public comment. We will close that. Move on through our list for this evening. First thing, uh, as we had talked about last time, was um, updating some of the shooting range rules and regulations, um, which that has been done, along with uh, completion of uh, you know having some sort of either hunter safety or or uh, authorized license to be partnered with somebody to be there. So. That I have a all. quick, just a Dave Eddy call, so you go first, because he oh. has two changes. I think it's just a typo on the first page closed. It says before, Sunday before Memorial Day to Sunday before Labor Day, but is it supposed to be and Sunday before Labor Day? Because otherwise it's... Or is it supposed to have an S after the Sunday? It's not closed oh, it's between closed those it. two days. Exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Oh, I, I, I was like... But it says it's open. Yeah. But then it's <laughs> so I had written so Dave gotcha. was talking about maybe I should say all Sundays between Memorial. So what you're yeah. saying is saying Sundays before Memorial Day to Sunday before right. Labor I, Day because Dave Eddie was like, should it say it might be easier to say all Sundays? I think all Sundays yeah, is clearer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So is that so we say they're closed all Sundays right. between Memorial and Labor Day, Day and Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. I like that. But that's not doesn't include the Sunday before. What you just said. Memorial Day? Closed all Sundays between. I remember it's the Sunday before. I know we should just put a dang date in there, is what I had done originally. Because this is. What are you going to close all Sundays the Sunday before the Labor Day? We'll have your in between. <laughs> if you just add an S after the Sunday, both Sundays. So close Sundays. The Sundays before Memorial Day to Sundays before Labor Day. Okay, I'm going with that. It's a better, like that. <laughs> or, you, or you could just put the all in front of it. All Sundays before Memorial Day to all Sundays. I don't know. Either way, it's what if you did Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Sunday before, I was like, come on. Let's, I just want to look at the calendar. Memorial Day, the Labor Day weekend. Yeah. 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 So closed Sundays before Memorial Day to Sundays before Labor Day. I'm sure that. No. Team, but that I, like, I like having all in there because then there's no confusion yeah. of, oh, I thought it was just Sunday of Memorial so Day and Sunday of Labor Day. All Sundays from the Sunday before. Sunday. So if you add weekend, Day. Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend. Yeah, but it doesn't take, yeah. You know, people, <laughs> this is what we labor oh. on. <laughs> it's going to be day spa on the deal. Exactly, you're right. All right, you're right. so I will take that. We so won't even know how to enforce it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we'll be confused ourselves. So somebody is today really the Sunday? Wait a minute. This is oh, this, this is the Sunday. Sunday? <laughs> yeah. And this then is the, the second other, Sunday this week. The other change that Dave Eddie wanted was, or he said, for example, his wife does has not taken hunter safety, nor does she have a hunting license, nor does she have any interest in becoming a hunter. So, but she likes to shoot for target practice. So he's wondering if we should say something about, you know, shooters are required to have submitted proof of, or be accompanied by someone who has, if we say that for children 16 or younger, must be accompanied by an adult who has successfully completed hunter safety or, for, for, or holds a current state of a hunting license. So he's basically saying he wants the same thing to be said for someone using targets, but yet that was kind of Dave and Skip's point, wasn't it? Was that somebody, he had someone there who he witnessed who had not shot before and was right. with someone who also had and then, uh, I think, or maybe he had a license, but he just. I think an adult and a responsible, adult should be responsible for themselves, and I think that they should, I think getting safety I don't think that's asking too much. Okay. 
I'm not the, asking to put out money to pay for a license. I'm just. I think the only thing you open is the can of worms here, where if you put for a company bar, you could have one person down there with a I don't know, hunting license, and you could have six other people down there mm -hmm. that just want to right. target you. Can that one person really mentor all six other people? You know, that's a good point. And, and you're right. I mean, and it's not. Isn't hunter safety? I can't remember. I mean, Three it's not a bad. I mean, I I see it both ways. I mean. I mean, it's not a bad thing to go through hunter safety or, or um, there, there's other courses you can take. There's gun handling courses. Um, because you're right, it's hunter not, safety or equivalent. It's not just hunter safety. I mean, they teach you gun safety and sure. all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. What so, we're so, looking for is a gun safety course, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like Jean's thought of like or equivalent gun safety course. Yeah, and then you know, children under sixteen. Yeah, still can be a company, can be a company by a adult. Yeah. All right, so we're going to add the equivalent gun safety course to the second bullet, which you just require. Then do you want to leave children 16 years or younger, must be accompanied by an adult. So we're going to do the same thing. It was successfully completed hunter right. safety or equivalent gun safety course. Yeah, because that follows the hunting and fishing guidelines. of Because up until 17, you can fish free. You know, mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Gun safety, gun handling, they just leave it at gun safety, we're all happy with that. Those were Dave Eddy's when he called. When he called he touched base today. So rough connection. So we all did with all those changes? Yep. Changes, mm -hmm. we change, uh, changes just to make sure we have it all. So it will say closed all Sundays between Memorial and Labor Day. And uh, then Shooters are required to have submitted proof of successful completion of hunter safety or equivalent gun safety course or current state of hunting license. Children 16 years or younger uh, must be accompanied by an adult who successfully completed hunter safety or equivalent gun safety course or holds a current state of hunting license. So those are just the... Move with those changes. Second. Any further discussion? Are we all in favor? Yep, fine. Okay. Right. 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 <laughs> so we'll get that, I'll get that to um, Dave and Skip, and then we'll get a sign made. So, we so the only question I have was, would they, you know, he's going to become, he's going on the town payroll, so yep. does that require us to deal with retirement? No, as opposed to being an appointed position by the select board, which you could uh, appoint them the No, this is just a one shot deal for a stipend. We don't pay retirement on, you know, some of the employees. Yeah. Quote, you know, employee. It was really or, only because of like workers' comp if there was an accident or something like that. So I talked to the LCT and they said, yeah, just put them on the payroll and just pay them once. I mean, do you think it might be a good idea? For the long term, to have that as a I don't pointy know. position nearly like all these other ones that we have, like could be the point of was was a stipend. Right? Could be, yeah. you know, you could always have a stipend of whatever. But yeah. You could do your yearly uh, appointment of, you know, because what shooting range doing? supervisor or whatever you want. Something like that, yeah. Call the individual and you could the sanctuary board and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except it's not a statutory position, so. Um, but yeah, you could do whatever you want. I just needed to get them on. And he was like, you know, you could do a dollar or whatever. But we all know he goes down there and he drives and takes oh, his no, 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 But that's why we're putting him on because we need to cover him with insurance. That was yeah. the recommendation too. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. But you could, you can, you could do if you choose. Um, you can make an appointment. But no, we don't have to do retirement because it's a one shot deal. If he was a regular employee, like the weekly paycheck, then yeah, we would. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we, we too just need to see how the next couple of years goes with the, with the shooting range because you know we had the whole you know insurance thing this year that mm -hmm. we have got to take care of but who knows maybe yeah. a year or two later that becomes a, a large obstacle for us to navigate around. Yeah. 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 All right, nice
Knights of Columbus wants to move their coin draw. And they, we had, they did submit their proof of insurance, as you can see, and I did, we did tell them that they had to, um, signage plans need to be improved. That was a comment from last time, and see attachments. So they were given a signage plan and all that, so they could provide the proof of insurance, but as you can see, they want to move from the 3rd to the 17th. See, I think I'm confused with the, the coin drop. At one point we had, I thought we had a set of signs that were made up, and I could be wrong. Tell me wrong. But I thought we had a set of signs made up and that the fire department had. Fire department had. And we were going to talk about any time that we had, like, this is the everybody point. brought their own different signs. You yeah, know? that's what happens now. And I could have sworn during Greg's administration, we decided that we were, we were getting a set of signs made up that the fire department was, the fire department of the road, well, my recollection roadway was, was, was going to take department. care of. Okay. And then these individuals would have to seek them to borrow the signage. Oh, I'll that ask way we had, you if we did, I think we had talked about that. Yeah, the, that, that came up in my head when I was reading ago. this. That I was, I was like, I thought we had yeah. a set of signs, and I, my recollection was the fire department had them. Maybe what I couldn't remember was, that. was it just town entities? Like when the rec department does it, yeah. they can borrow the oh, fire departments, or was it any entity? And that was a piece I couldn't. It, I mean, to cover us, I mean, I guess. It's, I mean, it's safer if it's a uniform set of signs yeah, and right. it's just part of the requirement, but then it's the, are we willing to sacrifice our signs to right. the wear and tear? And I guess, you know, Knights of Columbus, they have their own insurance, so if something happens, that They would, do, and they have, right. I mean, we're, we're also giving them, we give them a sign plan that says, this is what you need to do. So they could borrow them from Pike, they could borrow them from Jay Hudgens, they could, they could borrow them from other people, yeah. they could rent them. Whatever, but I, I don't know if this is news to me, but I can ask David Aldergetti um, about the coin drop signage. The Knights of Columbus seem to have very sparse signage. Which is one of the problem that. Just a, maybe a little A frame thing just before you get to it. Right. Which, Which is by law, they have enough. to be yeah. a certain yeah. size. And that's yeah. what I told him, because that was your certain, concern. Certain, certain, you know, they have to be delineated. Yeah. And, you know. exactly. Generic signs would not necessarily include their saying this coin drop is for right well i'm just wondering and, and uh, i mean i don't know how much a set of signs would be maybe i don't know five hundred dollars i don't know um but you know maybe something for us to think about that to purchase a coin drop package i guess and have it somewhere either Either it's down the it, either it's at the municipal yeah. office and the shed. We the should shed have a coin or, drop to raise money for the signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or, you know, I mean, you could, you know, you could buy the signs and you could have a fee that goes to the coin well, drop. Well, I know a $10 fee or something. Or something. I know that our signs. At least, at least, then we know that the signs are the same right. signs, because we do frequently have uh, complaints about certain signage out there. Yeah. And all it takes is wrong person be riding around on that mm -hmm. day, or OSHA, OSHA officer. Well, or the signage that the fire department has starts here at the bottom of the bridge. Mm -hmm. It starts up at the curve of top of Church Street, so it's, it's just this clean drop. Mm -hmm. But it's proper, you know, advance warning mm -hmm. for people coming down through there, and then once you get there, it's obvious it's the fire department. Some of the other ones just have a little makeshift, you know, I don't know, one by right. one. So the one and a half, I'd, one and I'd half rather half. have the bit more visible yeah. early yeah, so you know, early notification. Okay, so I will say this: the Knights of Columbus knows their signage wasn't acceptable, and we told them that. I don't think that you should buy a sign package and let anyone use it because you're going to get sued. If there's a problem with the Knights of Columbus and we provided the signage, that's us now. I they are they are receive a sign plan. They know what they need to do. They could borrow them from any qualified, you know, agency that has But are we prepared that if they set up on Saturday and their signs aren't correct, that we're going to kick them off the road? I mean, well, or I you can, we, we could, or we could say, or we could just deny their point, their permits in the future. Um, and I know that the rec committee gets their stuff from the fire department. So your recollection may be correct that you bought a package that the fire department owns that they use for town entities, whereas the Knights of Columbus isn't. So my concern is a liability issue, that if they use our signs and our signs are not up to MUTCD yeah. standards, 
is we're not setting up the sign package. You're kind of, there's a trust here. Right. So that's one of the reasons we get their insurance. So that's my concern is I think that if we provide sure. the signage, we're accepting the liability. Yeah. So, but I think what we could do is drive by their coin drop on July 17th, and if their signage is inadequate, then we could send them a letter to say, no more coin drops for you. <laughs> because you, you know, you were warned, we told you your signage needed to be improved, we provide you with a packet, the conditions state that you will do such and such. The, so, the, 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 the rules, <laughs> or the guidelines, yep. include positioning, in they, other words, do they say yeah, they should they, be at the curve and at the base of the... Does it say it has to follow... I don't GCD have it right standards. here, right. but it does say um, they are given a plan, as I don't have a copy of it right here. Um, it does say a, a, a sponsor a agrees in writing to comply with any and all attached um, participant and traffic safety requirements. A typical layout with required signs is attached. Applicant must provide required signage. Um, I just, I'm, it, maybe not, if, well, if not, we need to make sure that in the future, yeah. that the, the plan yeah. <laughs> includes a placement. I but, can look and yeah. see. I'll look and, at and that it. Was a, I can't picture up. That was like one that. issue we had, Gene. Um, I think, I don't know, Lindley, if you were on the board, yeah, I think Paul Lindley, definitely was. Yeah. Remember we had people that were moving it? Remember we decided that you have to have it in this location oh, yeah. only, period, period, right, because they were. Cause depending on who it was, they would move it up and down Church Street, or right. or I think at one point we had one down yeah. here in front of the printing press or something, yeah. yeah. And we determined that that was the safest location, yeah. um, and that all of them would have to go through there, but... That's where you changed so often. You moved them to here versus the white church, or you moved them to the white to, church? It used to be they kind of either went to one or the other. Right. And we decided that down there at Main Street wasn't safe. The Humane Society used to set up there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, people coming in and out yeah. of Champlain yeah. Farms yeah. too. Yeah. I do remember that. So we that decided discussion. that that church street would be the only location. So I'll ask Dave Aldrigetti if he allow. I'm assuming that's the deal because about that maybe that your recollection is right with that. Yeah, maybe we buy just for town identities. And I, I, I my brain was saying town only, but I'm sure I, you did buy for you did. I, mean, I remember talking about signs. it because we talked about the location and then we talked about because the signage was all. And Dave Eddie has you know, some people were using wood, wooden yeah. hand drawn signs and yeah. highlight yeah. spray paint. Yeah, because Dave has <laughs> signs, but I don't know. And so, we had them, you know, not putting up the signs in the right locations. And All right, so I will look and see what the map layout looks like for Knights of Columbus. And uh, that, not just Knights of but everybody gets and see what if, if it gives better placement. If not, I can ask um, someone at B-Trans to give me a bad, like a very more specific If you do find a map of what it should look like, would you mind sending that out just... So those of us that are actually yeah. here, if we're driving by and it's not the right thing, we can help advise them yeah. more accurately. That would be helpful. Right. Or they might have all, everything, it's just not in the right location. Right, like if, if we want it lower before the curve on going onto Church Street over the bridge, but they've got it up on the bridge, you know, that, like... Yeah, I think we I don't want to ding them if they're close, but not quite... It's not we had talked about that the sign has to be on this side of the bridge. Okay. I, I don't remember, honestly, I can't picture it in my head. I just know we sent them something, but we'll find out. Right. Yeah. Well, things like the reflective vests and... Uh, yeah, there can't be minors. Can't be minors in there. Back yeah. and barrels, I mean, that's all in the condition, too. Yep. Which, again, you get, what happens is you get, like, um, and I don't want to pick on anybody, but I think it was the Humane Society. The last one I went through, and their cones were like this big. They were you know? little, little kid. You know, when they're supposed cones. to be like two foot cones or whatever they were. They were the little, you know. I'll ask, uh, I'll also email Jester and Oscar to see if one of them's on duty during this um, to have them take a peek at it and let us know what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I will email you what we send out with the Knights of Columbus or everybody's, not just theirs, they pick up. Well, we've had two identities in the past, and Knights of Columbus was one of the two yep. that we'd had some issues with, so. 
So I'll send you what we include with their package, what we tell them when we send out their four, four typical layout, sure. but I'll email that to you guys. Thank you. <coughs> and then, yeah, if it's not enough, I can ask the Patreons. Teresa, can I pick up one of those packages for me? Because the um, Historical Society, too, does corn drop. And when you guys were talking about that, I noticed that our signs is not where they should be also. Yeah, if you just come into the office, Kelly can print you off. The, um, all it is is the application and there's a map layout, but Kelly can give it to you. Okay. All right. Great. So, motion to approve the Knights of Columbus coin drop move from July 3rd to July 17th? No. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We had John Hartland is retiring as the tree ward. So. I did um, reach out to Carl Russell just to see if he, mm -hmm. you know, knew of anyone who was interested, and um, he said he might. He was interested, and then I sent him a recent training at the LCT and said, "Oh, before you agree, you might want to look at this." <laughs> I don't just want to be what you're agreeing to. And he he checked it all out and watched it and said, oh, that's, that's not bad, Tree. So he is interested. He had hoped to maybe have a letter of interest here um, but by tonight, but it hasn't. So what I'll do is put it out on the website and, um, you know, Facebook, whatever, front porch, or maybe front porch forum and mm -hmm. the website and let people know we're looking for a new tree warden. And then it sounds like he's just moving. That's the only reason why. Oh, yeah, nice guy, too. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully he was it for Rye Gate, so uh, they're, they're eating. So I'll just advertise it on um, Front Porch Forum and our website, okay. and then, but I expect that we'll see a letter of interest from Carl Russell. Um, and obviously so that resignation, Forster, so. that resignation uh, takes place July 31st? Yes. Okay. He's done it for a while, so. So we'll just need a motion to accept the resignation of John Hartland as tree warden, effective July 31st, 2021. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, I, I, when we do these ones, I think, well, if we just deny it, because that's yeah. not <laughs> you, just, you have to stay. You can't even move <laughs> I'm back. sorry, but we went before the board, it just didn't work out for you. So. Yeah, it's just so nice. And we, we thought We decided just to add another year. <laughs> I feel like we'd see fewer and fewer yeah. people signing up for things to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Never like your sign. I haven't seen that person in a while. <laughs> All right. And we have the coronavirus local. Um, so the CLFRF funds. Yes, which we were calling, of course, that's what was called before, the American Rescue yeah. Plan. So we, I did these steps before any, you know, because obviously I, I can, and I told you guys that I had done it and that I had, I said I signed the paperwork and I, and I also requested the money. Uh -huh. Then something came, I think what's happening is there's changes and it's just slow to get to us. So then, and I gave you my submission summary so you can see where I did it. So basically now what the LCT is saying, now that they've renamed the money from the American Rescue Plan money to this, that basically you, to make motions to do what I've already done. So, mo so we need a motion so you that you're able to sign. Yeah. Sign the terms and conditions as well as a motion to be a contact and contact person and treasurer for Pam. Yeah. Like and so and you could, they're very specific about their wording because along with this is you're also accepting the awards, terms and conditions, and assurances of compliance with civil rights requirements. And so, you know, there's a process. That, so they basically just want to know that you're, you know, you're agreeing to all these things. Can we do them separate, do them as one? Um, I, they lay them out specifically, the LCT's recommendation was three specifically separate, just worded exactly like this. So. When they give us, you know, stuff like that, I always yeah. I say just do it. <laughs> I'll move the first one. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we need to be reading the full thing out loud? That's all right. I mean, no, I don't know. 
And the second motion is to appoint Town Manager Therese Kirby to serve as the town's authorized representative as required by the CLFRF from the U.S. Treasury to, to sign the awards terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements by prior to July 12th, 2021. So moved. Sir. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And then, motion to name Town Manager Therese Kirby to be the contact person and Treasurer Pam Brown to be the secondary contact for the town CLFRF award from the U.S. Treasury. Should this, should all three motions include the language of coronavirus local fiscal recovery? It could, but I just didn't want to spell it out on team times. So um, when I add it in the minutes, I can say that. I, I spelled it out in the first motion, right, I and just, not, but I can spell it out. If there are separate motions, they probably ought to. All right, I can spell it out when I do the minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. Find it odd that they, they include this paperwork reduction act. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this takes you more than 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you should have saw what it looked like before. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and I like that they tell us who to talk to. If it took us more than 30 minutes and we want our burden reduced, I was well, like, thank you. I didn't appreciate they, it. Didn't they say something like the original bill was like 1,500 pages? Oh, long yeah. Long. Oh, my God, yeah. So. And then the next one was 15. This should have a burden of 15 minutes. I was like, wow. I wish all my paperwork came with estimated time frame. And, and you know as well, you know that there's no way anybody reads all those pages. It's like 1,500 pages. And, right. You know, they literally will say, here it is, and we're voting on it tomorrow. I mean, who reads right. 1,500 pages in a night? That's how all what assistants are for. Because no one you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, how, how can you physically read that? Wait a second. That's why you have staff. I know <laughs> when I read it, I was like, wait, we have all come to calling that man or can rescue my money. But they couldn't give us something that's fun to say. No. Yeah. It's too easy to say. Cliff for it. would be longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get paid by the <laughs> but <it's laughs> <foul. laughs> Oh, so nobody's getting paid, I see. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Then we had the Mascoma Bank tax anticipation note. So there's no paperwork here. I just, uh, had something we put into place last year, obviously it's always good to have a tan. Always good to have one. Last year we were lucky we didn't have to draw off it, so it was fine. Um, I have not yet done my cash flow analysis to tell you how much it will be, but I just wanted to have that discussion with you, the paperwork. Um, not sure it'll be next meeting, probably the meeting after. Um, but it's, you know, we need to have that for bills that, you know, just in case something comes up that we don't have capital funds for. We said That's last year that we had applied for a $300,000 one at 2.8%. Yeah, that was last year, yeah. And so we I, didn't take any of it. No. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has the loan interest and things like that. I don't know what it's going to be. She won't, they won't tell crazy, yeah. us until it's, um, until, you know, I file the cash, the cash, you know, and send it to that. But, but I don't. Hopefully, it's Is it an actual loan or line of credit? It's just an anticipation. It's pretty much a line of credit, yeah. Because you don't, then you would only be paying interest on what you actually draw, right? Right, right. Plus right. paying back. Yeah, yeah. so if you Plus only take back, 15 but. grand, then you pay 2.8 on 15. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it's just a nice precaution to have. So if no one's actually opposed, then I'll move forward with that. And um, it probably won't be next. I don't, they won't, I don't think they'll be ready for a turnaround in two weeks because. Um, you know, I always have the lawyer review it, so. Oh, the, the voters approved this on voter day, didn't they? And that's the tax anticipation one. Right? Is that one of the items? Uh, no. No? I thought it was. For the, for the school it is. Oh, for the school but not for the yeah. town. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I was like, we, we approved we one, but it was yeah. for the school, not for the town. Why yeah. does the school do it that way? Yeah. yeah. Well, then, yeah. So uh, anyway, sorry. So I'll move forward. With well, that. it makes sense on the towns and things because the town has to pay the school no matter if we collect it all over. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so in some ways, it's probably right. Right. should be with the town more than the school, right? Because there's a lot of times that we pay out before we 
Well, maybe that's why we oh, don't let the voters decide. Because yeah. <laughs> we don't get a choice. Mm. Every the year. wheels are turning. <laughs> every year you pay. Right. I know. That's yeah. why we're sitting on hundreds of thousands in taxes. But they've got their money. Um, gotcha. Somehow, I don't know. I don't There's know. no frustration there, though. No. <laughs> no. no. So this is still a page of budget. We need more time to review the loan documents for the transfer station. So we'll have those at our next, at your next meeting. And I already told uh, Royalton that as well. Um, so it's all in hand. Um, I had a quick question from your manager's report. Uh, you said you just had another meeting with GW Tatro. Do you um, do you know when they're anticipating paving? I know what, at one point in time we were told August, but I'm just wondering, a lot of their time frames have shifted around. Is that still? I, I'm not sure yet. Okay, that wasn't I part of your I know that um, Jeremy, Jeremy Zulu from, what is that now? Sunapee. Springfield or Sunapee? Which one is where? Sunapee. It's now Sunapee. Mm -hmm. Sunapee Paving is coming here, I think, the week of, I think the week of the 26th to look at the work because I'm going to ask him to pave just the entrance to Mascoma. So, you know, to the municipal yeah. parking lot, not too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over there. And I was going to ask him for a price on um, Sand, Hill. Sand Hill, as much as we do not want to pave a portion of Sand Hill, but we don't have a choice. It's so bad um, to see what we can get for a price on that. So I would say, you know, that so he's blocked out that week. So I don't know if it's so my guess is. So I'm going to say the end of July, beginning. I don't have a hard and fast date. When we had our meeting, Jay LaFontaine had tried to reach him, but he hadn't heard back from him. So, um, I think everybody's busy. Well, so Jay. Paving, uh, they'll do, do also do some repair work to, for example, the top of the depot. That big dip that's there. And there's a few well, sections going up through town. So there's um, only there's a couple that we didn't accept. Yeah. One is by. Um, uh, uh, Spalding Press, thank you. Yeah, one is by Spalding Press. That one we didn't Spalding. accept, so that's being redone. Um, and the one in front of the bar. I think that's... That one's really... Yeah, I think there was two. Yeah. And there's also going to be some other work because there's a couple where um, a couple of the... Uh, they manholes, the but were taken out. The covers were taken out by the pavers, so that needs to be fixed, and yeah. some things need to be adjusted to grade. But I believe we end up accepting almost all the trench paving in the end, trench patching that they've done, except for I think it was two areas. Um, and there was a couple where we talked about, like one was by the corners, by the uh, grocery store, uh, and we talked about it. And the engineer was like, "Look, Trace, by the time you try to fix this, it's going to almost be worse." So we, there was a couple areas. So they're gonna fix those two areas, plus they'll do North Main, they'll put the final coat on Avon, final coat on Livery, and they'll pave Cushing and um, Clifford. So they've also replaced a culvert for us up there. And um, so drop it up. Since they were gonna have to, they were gonna pave right there anyway, so we did have them replace a culvert. So my follow-up question on Paving um, goes back to the, and we had this conversation in the spring or like early summer was uh, the crosswalks and having them painted. And I think at one point in time you were gonna you were gonna have that meeting with them about what was needing to be repaired and painted or not painted, repaved, and then sort of decide about the crosswalks. And I was just curious if there's any more movement on. Are we going to paint the crosswalks? Yes, we are going to paint the crosswalks. Alan was hoping to have painted them before. Then it was, you know, 100 degrees. Then it was rain last week. This week he's on vacation, so they're not going to paint it this week. Okay. So it's so it's the plan moving it's forward slated. is this. He will get them painted twice a year, before Memorial Day and before Labor Day. So I believe also Tatro will end up paving crosswalks. We are not having them re-stamped. That's not going to happen. So they will be painted. I think if Alan does it, he's going to do the white for now because we know we're going to be cutting up the street again. So if he comes back next week and paves and paints, I told him not to do the red, just do the white outlines for now. And then 
he will redo the crosswalks as white outside, red inside, but not restamped to be cross yeah. That's just not going to happen. No, and the, that's fine on the restamping. I just know the I've had a number of complaints yeah, and me questions too. about I have it. Too. So I wanted have to follow up with it. I've had several complaints, and uh, sure. but yeah, the week he, he was scheduled, he was going to do it two ta what, times. Once it was really hot, and then the other, then last week he was ready. And of course, too, it's hard because you plan by the weather, and it says it's going to rain all day. Then it doesn't rain, and he's made oh, his like plan. Today? He's not coming to set up to pay. You know, yeah. so that's been yeah. Probably like, Sunday, probably Sunday. Well, yeah, no, it, it helps to know that it's like on rain. his to do list, so then yeah. when people do ask. Say it's it's in the works. So. Yes, exactly. And that um, actually should have the same conversation then with. I also met with um, Robert Geico, and he is wanting some signage for the crosswalks, in which he was willing to pay for a couple of signs. But what he's looking for is solar powered the crosswalk signs that have. First, he wanted all the lights around it but these the ones I sent him a picture of have a light in the at the four points mm -hmm. and he that are solar so he really wants something that brings you know attention to the crosswalk and I and he's offered to pay for I think he, he offered to pay for a portion like a couple of signs basically um, and his concern is that the select board does not have the pedestrian safety is not a big concern of yours. When in fact, obviously I said, you know, look, it's, we've had construction in the downtown for two years in a row. The bowl belts are gonna go back in next year. They have to go back in for at least- They have to, it's part of the grant. You, you can shake your head all you want. <laughs> part of the grant, despite most of us don't want them there. But what he would like to see is more signage for downtown for crosswalks. Um, I am not obviously not opposed to more signage for crosswalks. What I was am concerned about was having it lit up. You know, people do live downtown, so you know, do, there's communities that are opposed to big LED lighting and that constant, you know, light all night type of thing. I think there's actually something in the, at the BRB and the, some of the conditions condition use stuff that describes the non-use of neon lights. It does, but we would, that doesn't that affect doesn't us. Doesn't affect the municipality? Well, not because we're just putting in, we're doing road signage, so safety would trump. We're not, I, we don't need something. You have to, must have to run it by the state first. Not to sign our own downtown. No? No. Sure. Yeah, because we're not, this isn't a state highway. I mean, I would ask for their input on a plan, for sure, to see if I could get someone at the state level to you know, come down, but we control the signage, you know, in the downtown. But how that being said, mm -hmm. I told Robert that I personally was not ordering signs with LED lights until I had shown the select board what they looked like. And I just received an email from him over the weekend saying he liked, because I had ordered um, the lights and speed signs from Treetop, and I had sent him a link to show him what they looked like to see if he was indeed interested in paying for some of that. Um, and he has he has some really big ideas about what he wants to see downtown, like flashing caution lights when you enter a certain, you know, um, even on River Street, and where I think that maybe buying a couple more lights, like we're, signs that we're going to buy that are solar powered, that kind of show you what how fast you're going when you come into town. A couple more of those next year, but one, you know, for the bridge when you're coming in on, um, you know, coming in that portion of town, you know, hit all the entrances. But anyway, so, you know, it's an ongoing discussion. He did offer to an amount of money, which was nice. So I'm gonna print out a colored picture of the signs and show you what they look like and try to reach out to B Trans about, or actually maybe Two Rivers. I'll talk to Rita about a plan, a signage plan for downtown. And I think it's a great idea. I think the thing that always kind of stirs my pot is when, you know, there's 11 empty chairs sitting out there right now. There's two bodies here. Not one time has Mr. Geico or anybody else come to this board and say, hey, what do you think about this, right? Because I know our board, more times than not, have done things in the past. And to say that the select board is not, doesn't care about the safety of pedestrians in the downtown mm -hmm. is just incorrect. I think it's so because he goes suggest to to come before the board yeah. and sit in one of those 11 empty seats because 
I mean, that, that's just ridiculous, really. I think what happens is he goes to the town manager, and then maybe that message isn't relayed to you. I don't know. Matter. I'm just it, quoting. The select what board meetings are second Public. and fourth Mondays of the month. So Absolutely. Are we supposed to are to control traffic or to control pedestrians? To light up the pedestrians. We would like to, to alert, control traffic uh, in the sense traffic. that the they're to bring attention to pedestrian crosswalks. Like you'll see them in some towns, there's a, a you know, So it's not a pedestrian go walk, don't walk. No, no, it's, it's, just, no, it's kind like of more alert, alert, alerting the motorists that there's a I just want there. Yeah. 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 yeah, bright green, yellow green. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you'll see them in like the, neon green signs. Issues with like the walk, don't walk is that now we want to provide the beep, beep, beep. Right. Yeah, yeah but you well. don't right now because you can't, we don't, yeah. no, because, well, we have some empty conduit, if we, you know, I could ask Dave Eddie where it is, but those are really pricey. Yeah, so no, he's really just wanting to bring attention to, which I can understand Trust what he's saying, you know, when people are coming down Church Street, if we're already getting complaints that people are speeding, mm -hmm. then, you know, he, we had, he had talked about even one right here, and um, from, in front of the town hall, which is really connecting the same side of the street. I'm thinking, you know, crosswalks for, and, but I'll ask Rita, she's great about that at Two Rivers, about a plan, some, you know, what would be appropriate downtown signage for that. And, you know, and obviously Rome wasn't built in a day, we can't, you know, probably buy it all in one year, but at least it gives us an idea of the cost, we can put it into the budget, and then Mr. Geico, our, Services are willing to pay for you know up to a certain amount, then we can certainly try to match that. And those are all great ideas. I mean, <laughs> and the reason why we don't have a lot of that right now is because we've had to rebuild the infrastructure that we can't right. see. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. make sense to put signs up when you've got to dig the road. Up. Exactly. So, but but again, that just kind of my boiling point is just those ideas would be welcoming to come to the board. Yeah, but don't them. tell us we don't care about people when right. you've never brought the idea before us. Exactly. And I didn't know what you'd heard. You know, I didn't know either. I it's hard for me to know what other town managers. But once you know, once we have the infrastructure all in place, and let's say, I don't know, whatever, the state comes back through and paves it again. It's all perfect, and it's great. Like you know, yeah. all these things. But Absolutely. to add it and have to rip it back out again, you know, it's. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, and like I said, I don't know if he's talked to someone. I don't know what a prior no, town manager. Never, well, never I don't know what a prior town manager has told you. So we will, I will speak with him and um, uh, again, obviously, because he emailed me back so that he liked him, so I'll reach out to him again. So uh, the other thing was, uh, as I, Jack Cowdery called, he'd hired, which we knew, he'd hired a contractor to clean up his mother's memorial on Campbell Road. That was the money um, that was, that uh, a year or two years ago, he had worked with Carol Ketchum, or actually we'd ask Carol Ketchum, he had petitioned probate court to get some of the principal from the Cowdery Trust in to pay for the work up there, the flood, to work up there. But what, the way that the, the probate, that the trust is listed is that the, only the interest can be spent and it goes to the schools and the cemetery and his mom's memorial and there's a list a mile long. Well, it hasn't really made much interest so Well, and it's only the interest after $600, after $600. so it's like yeah. it has to make more than $600. Yeah. Exactly. So he is saying that he'd like the town to add a twice a year cleanup weeding leaf removal to someone's duties as currently he maintains that he's saying he can't maintain it forever because he has no family to take it over. And I reminded him, as, as you know, that the trust, this is, you know, we're way down the totem pole and there's not, it's not necessarily true that we get money to maintain it because it, there's a list of out, you know, organizations ahead of us that get money. So the concern is that you're going to, that's within the town's right of way, yes, but it is his mother's memorial. I'm not sure where this falls, where it become, are we maintaining private property? What, you know, what happens here if we take over the maintenance of this? And then, what happens? And then it opens up a can of worms for mm -hmm. all the other identities. Then. Yeah, so we could tell Jack to leave us another request just to take care of I mean, it's too bad, I mean, I understand why they have, yeah. why it's set the way it is. But, I mean, if they would have appropriated like X dollars a year, that the town used to make sure that the upkeep was done. 
then that makes sense. But I mean, we looked at the long list there, and it hasn't generated anything since what 2012 yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it had been a very long time since anything. And then that, even when that happened, it was just a small amount of money that it went to. I think the cemetery. Yeah, the cemetery. Yeah. So. Yeah, there was a there was a list. Of it's them. too bad that they couldn't just re go through. Not that he wants to go to court all the time, but maybe right. somehow get a. Could could small they change little the stipend of the trust? He could, but I mean, once the principal's gone, the principal's gone. So even if they say they're going to give the town an allotment of one hundred dollars a year, you know. Um, yeah, he'd have to decide what it is he's going to maintain. I don't know if the other the cemetery money was just for the cemetery as a whole. I don't remember, or was it for, no, it was for his the mom? maintenance of their families' uh, grave site? So uh, yeah, eventually, eventually twenty thousand is just not going to cut it anymore if the interest mm -hmm. isn't covering, you know, that. So I was, I just told him I would talk. I said, I'll talk to the select board, Jack. You know that the way this is worked out right now. I'm like I'm not saying it's a total hardship because people drive by, but but still it's still it's, and, and it's nice and it looks very nice, but it's still a private property. But again, I mean uh, not to say that you know we would do it or not do it, but it, it's a, it'd be a little different if it was like right in the village area where where one of our employees has to be I'll make it up weed whack in, in town anyway, so mm -hmm. we could just yeah. come over and do that. But this is way up it way is. up on top of the mountain. So it's not like you're just like hitting the next it's, section. So is this a private cemetery? No, it's, it's a, a it's memorial. It's just a memorial. On it, just a memorial, so it's not a burial. So. No, it's on the corner of Camp Bell and Camp Brook. If you go up, it's, people used to get water there. It's a spring there. spring source, and there's a memorial there for his mom. And it's very nice for Rose Cow Tree. It's very nice. Um, I mean, is there a way, and I get that this is a little bit trickier, but... He's sort of making this plea to us, saying he has no family to take it over. Could he create a sort of secondary trust to the town to help with the maintenance? Sure. Like, could we could sort of counter propose, like, we want to help you out, but you will also need to help us out and right. help us cover this cost? And the way the original trust is written, we really can't take it on in the way you're asking. And we get not wanting to go back to probate court again. He's already done that once, but right. you know, is there a way we can come up with a way to do something that then is benefiting or co helping cover the cost and right. benefiting what he wants out of this? They would still have to get into the original trust mm -hmm. money to do that. Unless, no, I'm saying fund, making a whole separate, a one. yeah, a whole secondary yeah. trust. So where, does, where does the money come from? That's whole new one. When he dies. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Yeah, I, I mean, he, I he's asking. Like yeah. Right, but it doesn't hurt to ask. He could come back and say, I'm a pauper and, you know. But he's, he's telling us he has no family to take this on. So if he has no family to take this on, then he has no family that's going to inherit anything. So could he? I don't think it hurts to ask. Could you create something that will help perpetuate this in your family's name? Like a perpetual care. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask because he can say no, just like we can say right. no. And in the meantime, he could hire someone when he can't. You know, like he could hire someone to go and maintain it. Mm. I, I suppose, right? Yeah, but what happens to the other trust if you if a marine passes away? Nothing, because it's all it's to the town of Bethel. So the trust has already been given to us, the bequest, bequest okay. and it's already been given to us with the parameters of use. So if he passes away, we would get that, we would have access to that. Yeah, it just stays the it way it's always been. It doesn't it just stays the way it's always been. Just yeah, it yeah, it doesn't, we still get here. It's still interest. over $600, any interest earned in over $600 still, yeah, still that already, exactly the same way as It already been. belongs to the town. Yeah, so they're basically saying create another one. Um, so then are you also saying that if he's still alive, do you want him to just hire a contractor? I mean, we could give him somebody who may, you know, he could hire a contractor to maintain it himself outside of this money. If he's, and if he's alive, there's no bequest, and he's saying he's unable to maintain it, he could hire someone to maintain it. That's right. It's, it's, it's not a town property. 
It's it's not a town. Well, it's in the town right away. Mm -hmm. One could argue that there's some kind of a, so some kind of so somebody town to at least maintain it right away. So and so a teenager is that. killed in a in a car crash in front of the school. And everybody goes and puts flowers and crosses and so on and so forth and build the makeshift memorial. Now all of a sudden, the community wants to, you know, private individuals want to make that into a permanent memorial. Do we become responsible for every private memorial that somebody wants to erect? I hope not. I think we have cemeteries. We have. Right. Yeah. We have. No. There are ways to do that. You're right. Yeah. No. You would eventually. Yeah. You're right. You, yeah. You could, yeah. I mean, and, and we do maintain. We plow. We keep the road open so people have access to it. We we ditched in there after FEMA. You know, after the flood, we ditched in there. And, um, you know, memorials been there for. Oh yeah. Decades. Yes. And, well, and it's why they started the trust in the first place. I think the issue that we're running into is the way the trust was written no longer does what it was intended to do. And so it's either a go back to court or come up with some alternate solution. I mean, decades solution. ago it was great because the interest was at a point where, where the trust was gaining money and the interest was being spent to, to take care of that. But now, I mean, we looked at what it was like the last one. What are 15, 20 yeah. years it hasn't even right. and accumulated any interest. It's not to say that Jack has to create a second trust. It's kind of getting him to see either you're going back to probate court and rewriting the way this trust is written, or we have to come or up with some alter alternative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it can't just be assumed, and I think like Jean's point, it can't be assumed that the town will just take on every potential private memorial that's created. Right. It's a, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Oh, I and I think the location of it makes it trickier because it's, right. uh, it's because not it like it's convenient right for us to just do while we're doing other things. It would have, you know, it's a special it's trip have, to go out, right? would still right? be I mean, setting a precedent. Yeah, oh, right, yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah. even, and so. I wonder why it was put there. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Any idea why? Well, there's land. He, he owns land up there. Um, Jack owns it's land. It's always a spring. Awesome. So maybe, maybe the, he accesses it via Hooper Hollow. So maybe yeah. the land that they own could be it connects from Hooper Hollow to Campbell right there because he does own land up there. So the other question was I heard God took, uh, or I called back um, Joanne Marshall today, this evening. She, before the meeting, she is we're called on behalf of the historical society so for the next meeting um she wanted the select board to take a tour of the historical site which is right downstairs so i didn't know if you wanted to meet at 5 45 next meeting and then you could do a tour of the historical society come upstairs and then have the historical society meet with you then um, they want to let you know what they're working on. They're going to write you another book, and there's a lot of stuff that they want to do. They currently have a lease agreement for a quote with the town where they pay $200 a month to the town for use of the room downstairs, which they would like the select board to stop charging them. Um, and just to kind of let you know they are a nonprofit and let you know what they're doing and, and where their money's going and how they're going to be working on this new book and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't know how do you want to do that. Do you want to meet at 5:45, do the tour, and then come back up here? I thought it might be easier. Or do you want to just start at six, do the tour, and then? I'm, I'm just not really sure. I told her I thought maybe a few minutes early. We'll just do I'd, the tour. I'm fine to meet at 5:45 if others are on board. Okay, because she has not. Um, she wasn't sure how many people had got. You know, how many of you had been able to go through the historical um, site. Even though Doug was the bouncer, he let me in on the last time. <laughs> so you good with that, Chris? Five forty-five, yeah. and then they'll meet at six. Okay, so and then um, so we can, so then they can talk to you about all the great things that they're doing. So I, uh, we, Joanne, and I just had a brief conversation. So you can see the new ed, the state education. It's funny that it came in it's earlier than. So the state 
education ever came in, so I gave you a copy now of what the full tax rate looks like. Um, so that's in your packet as well. Um, I think the rest of this is pretty good. Just uh, Oh, yes, the Planning Commission's public hearing on the zoning bylaw amendment is scheduled for Wednesday, July 21st here at 7. So if you have any issues or concerns with the draft, bring it up now. If you can't make it on the 21st, then send me an email telling me what you know what your concern is or where you think there may be an issue and I will make sure that it comes up that I will bring it to the PC of that night myself because you want to make your own your own public hearing bed it's very selfish and that's <laughs> going to be here that's going to be here at 7 but you want to address it now while the PC is doing it it's just going to make your right. lives easier so like I said I mean, unless it's a non-major change Right, exactly. But you know what? Yeah. It's just going to be nice for you if the document has already been edited. Mm -hmm. You get it. All I's dotted, T's crossed. It makes your life right. easier. Which, by the turn, makes my life easier. Because <laughs> yes. I want to be planning much fun. <laughs> I have to do all the typing. <laughs> so, so. Because uh, that's the way it still is with at the select board level, as long as it's not a major change. Yeah, exactly. It can be done at the select board level. It if it's major, be. it has to go back, right? Yes, absolutely. So, and so anyway, it's just easier. Plus, too, frankly, it's courtesy. They're, the PC has put all this time in. So if you have a concern, it's nice for you to go to them and say, hey, look, here's right. my issue. But like I said, if you can't make it that night and you have a question, just email me. Okay. I will make sure it gets brought up. No, I did talk to the state today because we are still owed money for the Northwest Quadrant for FEMA and for Peabine. So I emailed with them today and they're supposed to meet tomorrow with their financial team. I said, look, this is like, you know, half mil. We want, we want the money back. So hopefully they will finally. Um, What's the issue with the Northwest piece of it? I have no idea. I don't know. I think that we've Because that was the Gilead piece? Yeah. That was the this is the 2019 yeah. flood? Uh-huh. Yeah. And Peabine, you know, finished up last year, so that's yeah. fine. And but they've signed off on that. We did end up getting sixty-six thousand and some change more from Peabine once we because we had replaced a culvert that was out um, it was in the engineering drawings, but it wasn't in our original FEMA complaint. But they ended up we met with them and went through mitigation and we did end up getting more money, which was great. Mm -hmm. So um, we were very happy with that, but I don't know what the whole, that's what I've been saying is what's the holdup with the North? I don't know right, why. Right, because that's been done. I think it's well. just been in the state. I don't know. I'm not like, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus because I don't know. Tell but them before they send us additional money out of the door to send us the I additional know. money. Mm. Well, that was, yeah, part of it I think was what, what I was told today was because that was Anyone larger than four contracts. who was already working on FEMA, the same people that work on your FEMA claim at the state, there was like 500 new FEMA claims made because of COVID. They all went to the same people. So that was what I heard today. So now you know what I know. So the pool's open. Things are going great. Still, there's still openings for swimming lessons. So if somebody wants... Um, if your child needs swimming lessons, please stop by the pool. Things are going well. Um, I saw on the BCAX, the state has got a $6 million chunk of money that they want to give out to recreational centers and trails. Yep. Stuff like that. Yep. The uh, committee was aware of that. Yeah, we've, I've sent some information out to the jury and ported on, and they were, I think they're still kind of figuring out how they're going to allocate the money, what the grant process is going to be, but yeah. Yeah, it has to be pretty soon. Does that line up with any of the... I don't know. I, we have, I've sent the information on, but last I knew, the state did, they, yes, they have a chunk of change, how they, but they have not put out a grant out well, yet. The, the, the news articles on CAX just said it was going to be targeted towards trails yep. and re outdoor recreational facilities. Yep. That's, that's just what Which is true, but they haven't found a vehicle yeah. yet for how they're going to put it out because there was a blurb and um, it was Two Rivers or VLCT or something, but I remember sharing with Beatrice saying, hey, you know, there might be more money there coming, yeah. but mm -hmm. they had figured out how they were going to deliver it. Well, it sounds like if we can get a project that's, you know, can hit the ground. Ready. Yeah. 
Probably going to be first come, first serve type money, right? Well, I don't know, right? I don't know because they don't know. They haven't figured out um, how the state has figured out how they're going to put the money out yet. Because sure, they have the second phase of the um, skate park, which would be great. We all already know they have trails and the pool. I've thrown a hundred thousand dollars at the pool in our capital, you know, fund building, but I don't think that's close. Because what's going to happen is we're going to need to go in and dig out all of the existing um, poor sidewalk. We need to redo all the piping in there. And we need to have the lining, which is now fiberglass, torn out. And there's something else that they're recommending because the gentleman who repairs that, the uh, fiberglass is, you know, when I'm done, I'm done. And, you're, you know, there's nobody else out there. So what they're saying is you'd be better off taking the existing pool, take out the liner, and, and, and spray this. I can't remember the material, but Dietrich's going to look at it this winter and try to come up with like a better price. So, but the piping underground needs to be repaired because the pool is leaking. We're adding about an inch of water every 16 hours right now. And Bob Walker, when he looked at it last week, thinks it's in the skin baskets. And if it's the skin baskets, then it means we need to dig because of where they are on the ground. And as soon as we dig there, forget it. Because the only part that they redid when they built the pavilion was the piece under the blue part. Here's the pavilion, here's this blue, then here's the pool. That's all they did right there. So they didn't, um, it's not like downstairs door. So they did, um, so anyways, uh, you know, if we're gonna fix one thing, it's gonna be a bigger project. So I mentioned to Dietrich, look, you know what, maybe we're gonna end up just Maybe it's going to be next year too. It's, it's an extra inch or more water and more chlorine, but I don't see a fix, you know, that fast. But we'll see. So we're kind of still on the lookout. For the money, so. But that was the last I knew. Paul was so they did not know how. Yes, there's money, but they didn't know what the process was going to be to get it out there yet. So we'll see. But we'll keep our eyes open. <coughs> was that the first Amtrak? I think so. To go back through. Oh, I don't I know. I think that was the first one. I knew it was coming sometime in July. Yeah. Oh, could be. I don't yeah, know. They were supposed to be doing a, a party of some kind at the Randolph at the train station. Was that tonight? I don't, I don't know what it was. Well, I know it's... It could be. I can't remember. They were sending it out It could be. Okay. They were yeah. trying to do a, some kind of a you know, celebration thing. Yeah, they right. were going to celebrate that, and they were going to get $2 rides down to Brattleboro and bust them back. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, can ride the train down, but we're not yeah, letting them come back. Yeah, I don't know. Is that how we're getting I'm people out of here? That sounds about right. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. When you're subsidized by Give the government, you can train do ride, things, right? I thought, <laughs> hey, I can do that with my grandson. Then he can yeah. say he's ridden a train. Well, you might as well ride it. You're going to pay for it, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, $2. So you won't have to hop the freight train anymore. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know, Lindley. Honestly, because my office is on the train track and I have the window open, you can't. It's funny sometimes it scares the life out of you because oh, yeah. you just don't. All of a sudden it's like, bang, you're like, ah. But well, an Amtrak is so. You it out. You don't hear yeah. it. Yeah. So Amtrak is so fast. That's why I was like, oh, that it was a, be. that was a fast one. That wasn't a freight train. Yeah. So, can you well, tell I've lived along the train tracks for the last yeah, eight years? Yeah, I've lived along the train tracks. You can say that. Oh, yeah. There's freight trains well, at Amtrak night. Amtrak is 25 minutes late if they are. <laughs> Supposed to go by at 6 minutes. All right. And select board meeting minutes for the 28th of June. Do we have any issues with those? Are we good to approve as written? I believe they be approved as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, you know that the historical site has a meeting tonight. That's what I was just thinking of. Probably the meeting. That explains why I saw Joanne with you, but yeah, she's, she's yeah. like, did he leave her in the car? <laughs> no, <laughs> so, I'm not going in there. <laughs> yeah, there was. Uh, um, yep. Um, on the pool. Does the pool have a drain? Um, I no because.
because we pump the water out. But that, that's what I thought we were still doing. That's what we were doing in the past. Like, someone told me that they, there was a drain in that pool that led down to the ball field. And something oh, happened. Oh, that, there you go. There is a culvert. There's a culvert. Yeah, water. there is. The water does go out. You're right. No, I mean, there's, there's a drain was pumping in the pool, so when the pool is draining, it it, it doesn't work. We wish, I don't think it's as efficient as that, is it? I know, let's put this way. I know that he pumps out water um, at the end because there's so much sludge and stuff, so he pumps it out. You're right. So I, and there is something at the bottom, you're right, because when they took it out, um, there's a plate that goes back on top to help stop the leaks, but. It, it must work because it, I was. You saw it. You I was down it. at the ball field. Um, my daughter was still playing, so it was probably like, I don't know, teetering right on the border of like the first of June. Yeah, it was. And I called Therese. I mean, there was water flowing out of that culvert. I mean, it was, it was running in that culvert, which is usually dry, mm -hmm. you know, faster than you could ever pump any water. I mean, to the point the ball field, the whole parking lot area was underwater. Yeah. So I called saying, is there because water there's, break there's somewhere? Also but there's water everywhere. That. They said, oh, they're draining the pool. Okay. And the culvert split because you said there's water coming out. The water was coming underneath the culvert too. The culvert <laughs> split, so which that culvert goes was... right underneath. Yeah. yeah. I, I just remember that somewhere down the line, I think it was Robert Hyde, couldn't maybe even Gary at that time, because we always had to had to pump it. And then I thought Rob had told me that there was a drain that they they plugged it or something. And I was wondering. There had to have been because that the water was coming there. out of there a lot faster than you could ever pump water. Because he had. But I know there's some, I, I actually have to ask, because, but I can tell you this, Doug, I know that um, at the end we pay and have um, Vermont Pipeline come in and get the bottom of it because there's so much leave and debris and sludge and all that 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 gets pumped out. Morgan used to wheelbarrow that out, mm -hmm. one wheelbarrow at a time to get that out. Right. So, so I was always under the impression that we were pumping it to a culvert and that yes, the culvert was obviously yeah. eaten under the road, but yeah. I didn't. I I this because time if we had a drain, why wouldn't all? Why would we be paying pipeline to get out the bottom? That, 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 just I think it's something that was with the drain itself in the pool that the was thing. leaking. I think they pumped it, yeah. and when they no, pumped it out, they culvert right in front of the, the house. Just as yeah. you are, there's yeah. a big drain that's right there, and that's where the water's coming from when they pumped it. Yeah. And yeah. so, the only thing is, if they did, well, they couldn't have pumped it. Well, they did pump it. They didn't put the hose in the culvert because it no, a lot of the water was flowing under the culvert. It's because the culvert split. We had yeah. pipeline oh. come in and camera it. We oh need, gotcha. We okay. need to line that culvert. We actually oh. got a price from them to line it because gotcha. other than digging that culvert. The culvert's not that old. But it split. It's no. It's, it's, it, it really? We replaced the culvert from yeah. Washburn's house up front of the road yeah. to Washburn's house. Because he was at I can't remember what the complaint was that Oh, uh, that culvert there, yeah, mm -hmm. truck uh, in, in front of his place. We've done that culvert in, in that, that area there, but I don't remember going under the road or anything like that. Yeah, no, it looked pretty old because they went in and they camered it. We're gonna mm. be, we're gonna line it. Well, that makes sense then why the water was coming out of the bottom. It's gonna be more efficient. But it was, it was coming right out of there faster than mm -hmm. yeah. any pump that we have that would pump water. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I think that Doug's right. I don't think the drain works, otherwise, we would mm. call pipeline. But I, I can't imagine the drain not working because that would have to be part of the filtration system. I was just nope. thinking, next time that you drain it, the skim baskets are part of the filtration you know, system. What he's talking system. about is the very base. That water doesn't get recycled there. The skim baskets along the side do it, but it doesn't. Only the top. Uh, but only we the top. only we only clean the top of the no, water. No, I mean the water. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm no, serious. There's no there's no mechanism that I understand. But I, look, I'm not a plumber. I don't know the whole ins and outs of this. I've picked it up between Dietrich and Richard a little bit this year. But the water, the water does circulate through the, through the baskets, through the skim baskets. But I know that one of the lifeguards had to go in and drop a cover on that down on the thing in the bottom because once it got cleaned out, it didn't get put back in. So we did have a little bit of a leak there. So, and I know she backwashes it every months a week so it's obviously chlorinated and tested and, mm -hmm. but I do know um, so I so I don't know I can't tell you the mechanics sure. of it I just know it's pretty just, it's old I just find it and it's old it. because it's not when they built the pavilion after Irene they did not update they updated 
the system in the building and the pump, but they didn't update the pool. So you're looking at new, newer technology in the building, but it's not a 40, 50 year old pool line. So I, I can't tell you the way it works for sure. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll definitely have to make that a priority. Yeah. Well, now it's a, yeah, it's a bigger issue now. So um, anyway, so, so hopefully okay. some of that money does, we can find some money because it's going to be an expensive fix um, to tear the whole thing up. Plus it's a bigger package. You tear it up, you want to put concrete all the way to the fence, you know, not have a grass there. All right. Anything else to come before the board before we enter into executive session this evening? I just had a couple of quick questions on the, on the uh, figures. Sure. Um, the preliminary for June or? The, yes. Okay. So the, the <coughs> materials, chloride, We, was that because of a price increase? Uh, it's like ten thousand dollars over. We actually had to switch, so we went to a liquid chloride. So from what we were using before, we went to a different type of chloride, so it was more money, oh, okay. and it's also a different system to to deliver it to the road. So, but I guess Alan said he didn't have a choice. The product is better, so which is nice, mm -hmm. a little bit less goes one way, but yes. And um, obviously, he underspent salt, so he knew he was going over his, his mm -hmm. work budget. And then the other thing was uh, tax sale expenses on the government operation? Yep, that's, and these are the numbers. I was, the auditors were in the office all day today, so that's already changed, but I can tell you what it is because um, <coughs> the tax sale expense includes writing a check to Key Hodgkin. Uh, okay. So you can see under miscellaneous revenue of 55000 we took in for Turkey Run to sell Sugar Hill. So this is the, includes the expense of him. Perfect. So what, uh, what Rick Brigham, what he had to do today, Solvent Powers, he said just net it against the income. So this, will, this number will drop for the tax sale expense. I think it goes down. Okay. I can't remember what the number was, the final number, but that's that. And you had some questions, right? Yeah, a couple of them, let me. Um, yeah. No. Well, a couple of questions and a couple of just. Okay. Um, so definitely, it looks like under well under the revenue, anyways. There's we didn't collect nearly as much penalties and interest as we thought, so we'll just probably have to keep that in mind when we do our next budget this season. Yeah, I figured that's a good thing because. Um, it, no, it is, and we had talked about like yeah maybe about three years ago because we were budgeting mm -hmm. for like you know at one point I think like. Seventy-five thousand dollars a year with mm -hmm. penalties and interest, and we knew that as people start paying their bill, that that's going to come down. Well, also, and we, we've been trying to lower that, so right, it, and it, it is, and it did, which is great because we it had looks like, like we're off by like I don't know, twelve thousand. Our something. reduction in, um, you know, on the books last year for our outstanding, you know, our delinquent tax report at the end of last year compared to our delinquent tax report at the end of this year is down like seventy-seven thousand dollars less. So that's mm -hmm. good news. No, we just have to. Mm -hmm. Part of this could be too, that. Chris, is she, um, as I'd have to look and see when, because we don't charge in penalty only once a year. And so we charge penalty in May. So um, I would be wondering if after 60 days, if this number doesn't go up. Right. Well, that was going to be the other thing, is being that this was only eight days after. Mm -hmm. that. Um, and then under the fire department, there was a bunch of items that either didn't get spent or underspent. So I yep. didn't know if any more of that's coming in, or there was safety supplies that there was fifteen thousand that they only spent. Yeah, there's more coming in. Because facility maintenance. Yep, there's. 16. They didn't do any training. Well, we also don't forget COVID, so they couldn't. Eat. Right. But so salaries are lower because there wasn't as many calls. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you have a 60 days. So any accounts payable, you know, we have, you know, 60 days for bills that weren't yet paid out of this budget to come in. And I know he has spent um, almost $40,000. Dave always waits until, uh, the, until May. Or until well, that was my spend. question. That was because he's always afraid that one of his, if it's one of those, you know, those big like apparatus fix, he's always said, like, I'm gonna wait because if I spend this money in January and then I have a big apparatus break, I'm hosed. So he all, no pun intended. Right. So he always waits. So yes, there's more money coming. 
And there will be more money for everybody coming more expenses because this was, you know, July for beginning of July. So. Yeah, I think that was the, uh, then I had the tax sale stuff too. But. Yep, and, and uh, yep, the tax sale. And then uh, to, once we do a balance sheet, I'll give you a trial balance next time. The, um, because the account, the tax amount changes, and there's still some stuff by obviously end of the year entries that I haven't made. You're gonna see an increase in labor this year because although we already have 26 weeks of payroll right here, what happens is at the end of the year, you accrue any payroll, and the way this payroll runs, the majority of it is in this fiscal year. So this year it's gonna look like we've had 27 payrolls, and next year it will look like you know, maybe 25 payrolls just because of the way the year ends. I think last year I accrued three days. This year I'll be accruing like 13 days just the way that the calendar runs. So you'll see some more labor expense. Um, yeah, so another 60 days and you'll have more bills. Another 30. Well, maybe more revenue. Maybe. Um, maybe, yeah, because we'll see what taxes happen. And then we've got 60 days to see what we're going to put in for a, for a number. Anything else? Do we have anything else? Okay, so I would entertain a motion to enter executive session to discuss the annual evaluation of the town manager. Sweetie? Good evening. Have a good evening. Thanks, Mr. Levada. So moved. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Did you say Paul in favor?